Good afternoon. This is Robo 122 Pneumatic Systems, lab number two, double acting cylinder control. Our objective today is to explore position and speed control for a double acting cylinder. At, when we're done, you'll be able to see how to make a cylinder go back and forth and how you can control the speed of the cylinder. So the components we use on the board, we have a supply manifold. We bring an air supply in here from our main supply and each of these are quick disconnects with shutoffs so that we plug a tube in to allow air to pass through. We can take the tube off and it will shut off. So we can connect several tubes. We have two selector valves, we call them SV1 and SV2. We use those to uh, turn on and off the air supply to wherever we need it to go. We are using these valves as 3-2 valves, which means they have three ports and two positions. One of the ports is the inlet, one of the ports is the outlet, and the third port is the exhaust, which we always need to have with a pneumatic system. We will be using in part two and part three a directional control valve, also called a DCV. This is a 5-2 double pilot control valve. We have one inlet, two exhausts, and two working ports coming out of it. And on the left and right we have two pilot ports where an air signal will come in to shift the position of the valve. We have a cylinder. We have it uh, the rod encased in a plastic uh, container for safety. The cylinder has a cap end and a head end. The, the cap end is blank, the head end is where we do the work, that's where the rod comes out. If we supply pressure to this end, we will push the rod out. If we supply pressure to this end, we will retract the rod back into the cylinder. On the fittings where the air goes into the cylinder, we'll see two knobs here. Those are inline flow controls and we will see them in part three, how we use them to control the speed of the cylinder. They should be fully open when we first start. On our panel here we have our supply manifold here. I have my two selector valves here. Call this one number one, this one number two. Here is my directional control valve, inlet, two working ports, two exhausts, two pilot ports. Here is my cylinder, cap end inlet, and head end inlet. This is the air supply we used in lab one. We're going to use it again in this lab. We will take a supply from here. We get the supply on and we turn that on. One thing with pneumatics, why we wear safety glasses if we turn the air on with the tube not connected. For part one, step one, we are going to make sure the cylinder is fully retracted, which it is. If it had been extended, we would put a pencil or even a piece of tubing in to push it back. I've made sure that both of the flow controls are fully open, and then I come back just a quarter turn or so, just to make sure that it doesn't lock in the fully open position. Okay, for part one, step two, we will just connect our air supply to our manifold push it in tightly. When I pull it, it pretty firm in there. Now I turn the air supply on, make sure that I can get air out of the manifold by pushing the tube in. It works. We're good. All right, I am now going to connect the air supply to my two selector valves. I'll put the tubing into the destination first, push it in firmly, and then push it in here. And I now have air when I turn the valve on. I'll do the same thing for the second valve. I connect my destination end and I connect my source. Push it in tightly, it's in, and now there is air coming out of there. The output of this valve, I put connected tube there and I will connect it to the cylinder. Push it in tight, holding tight snugly. I will do the same with from SV2 to the head end and now I have the air connected and that was step four. We'll do step five and six together here. Step five, I turn on my air supply on SV1, turn it on and the cylinder has extended. I 
turn it off and it will stay extended. I turn SV2 on and the cylinder retracted, turn it off again and it stays put. That was steps five and six. We'll do them again because the camera may not have been watching the cylinder. As I turn on SV1, the cylinder extended, turn it off, it stays put. Turn on SV2, the cylinder retracts, turn it off, it stays put. Now we're going to do steps seven, eight, and nine one at a time. I'm doing step seven. I'll turn on SV1. The cylinder has came out, come out. I will leave SV1 on. I will turn on SV2. Nothing has happened. That's an important uh, observation. Nothing happens when you turn SV1 on first. Now for step eight, I turn off and it retracts because SV2 is still on, telling it to come back. I will now turn SV1 on again while this one is still on and the cylinder came out slowly. And now for step nine, I turn off uh, both cylinders while the cylinder is extended and we we'll discover that the cylinder is extended, there is no air on, but I can easily retract the cylinder by pushing on it with a pen or other instrument. Now we will proceed to part two. Part two, we're now going to disconnect the cylinder from the selector valves. We will connect the output ports of the DCV to the cylinder. There we now have that connected. Now we will connect from selector valve one to the A pilot port of my DCV. Get in there, stay in there. You have to push them in hard. Now we'll go from SV2 to pilot port B. Now we will need to connect an air supply to the DCV valve. We'll push that tube in there and connect in here. We'll turn the air supply on again and try SV1 and the cylinder went out. Turn that off, turn on SV2 and the cylinder comes back. Okay, so the system works properly. SV1 goes to pilot port A which will allow the cylinder to extend. SV2 sends a signal to pilot port B which tells the cylinder to retract. Both switches are now off and the cylinder is retracted. Okay, we are now going to do part seven, eight, and nine. Part seven, we turn on SV1, the cylinder extended. We turn on SV2, the cylinder did not move. We will turn off SV1 and the cylinder retracted. We will turn it on again and the cylinder did not extend this time. We will now turn off both while the uh, cylinder is extended. The cylinder is not extended. Now the cylinder is extended and we turn them both off and we'll get our little pencil again and see if we can move the cylinder. We have both selector valves off, the cylinder is extended, but there is power air to the system and I cannot move this cylinder. I will just use SV2, make it come back and turn that off again and we now have the cylinder retracted ready to go to part three. Part three, we will now see how we can control the speed of the cylinder using these inline flow controls on the fittings. This one here and this one here. We'll start at the head end. I'll turn it in till it's fully closed. This, I turned this down till it was fully closed and then turned it back two turns. I will now turn on SV1 to make the cylinder extend and it moves much more slowly. If, turn it back. if I open this more, just another couple turns, it goes a little bit faster. It still goes slower as this is closed. The more this is open, the more it will go back. But we find when we retract, it retracts at the same speed as before. 
So for part three, step two, I have opened this one fully again with just a quarter turn back so it doesn't lock. This side I closed down all the way and just brought it back a couple turns to maybe three turns. So now I'll turn on SV1 to extend. It goes out quickly. Now I will turn on. I've turned on, turned off SV1. I will turn on SV2. And it comes back very slowly with a jerky motion at the beginning. I open this up a couple more turns. Again, go out quickly and come back more smoothly this time. We've now com completed all the steps in um, lab number two. You will have to uh, submit a report with observations, explanations for what happened in steps seven, eight, and nine of part one, step seven, eight, and nine of part two, and steps one and two of part three because we no longer have the one, two, and three steps in those parts.